Beautiful people, it's your boy Mr. Ghana Baby and I'm back again with another video. I mean, I was supposed to upload this video yesterday, but I was just giving them some time to come out and say something on what is happening. Give us a clarity. If you got my uh, earlier question about some Nigerians who are worried uh, that some of their relatives and their people have been badly treated in China. Have you heard of any of such? Well, no formal report was made to the ministry or the commission, but uh, there are some videos going viral where, you know, people now decide that you must bully through social media. That is not acceptable, and I don't think any one of us should, now, should be allowed to be bullied through social media. Now, here's the situation. Some people were kept in a hotel in China, regular 14 days quarantine, free of charge. After the 14 days quarantine, you're supposed to go to your home. Now you have some of these people who, who decided not to go to anywhere but start walking on the streets and saying, China, what are you doing with us? So normally we should learn to be disciplined and obey laws. If those Nigerians have a problem, where do they go to? You left the hotel, you wanted to continue to stay in the hotel, and they said, no, go to the mission in Guangzhou. They never went to the mission in Guangzhou. There's a mission in Guangzhou. We have a very functional Nigerian diaspora organization, very efficient very proactive. They didn't report to them. Now you went on the street and recorded yourself. Now some some people rather than, you know, ask questions, just started saying blackmailing. That is blackmail. Now those Nigerians, the federal government has said you can come back home. Go to the mission, register, put on your show your corona test and then with the numbers come out, you will be brought back home. Don't circulating videos. You don't know where those videos were, were recorded. So I'm not, I don't give in to social media bullying. No report has come to the commission, but I'm telling you, from the mission there, the mission in Guaz, let them go there, register their names, so, show their documents and all that, and register properly. And then the Nigerian mission in Guangzhou will liaise with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and bring them back. Names are already being compassed. They are on the street. Are they supposed to be on the streets walking around in China? No. You're not supposed to be moving about in groups. They're supposed to be in your home. They are walking around. If they have homes, go there. If they don't have homes, go to the mission. Minister, minister, bring your documentation and the mission will arrange for you to come back home. So please, I want to stress that all that social media bullying should not be tolerated, should not be accepted. Let's do things properly. Let's be disciplined. Let's follow processes. That's not blackmailing government. Mm -hmm. It's sad to see Africans being disrespected worldwide. You know why? Because the people in power don't care about its citizens. Africa got only two problems. People in power, which is the leaders that is leading the continent, and the people who vote these people into power. That is us. The situation in China is not getting better. Okay, hello everyone. My name is Mohammed Rasana Bilanji. I'm Cameroonian. Okay, what I'm about to do today might cause two things. The first one will be is either they send me back home or something might happen. I've been in China for almost three years now and now I'm in Guangzhou. Why did I travel to Guangzhou from Jinan to Guangzhou? Because I wanted to buy masks and send them back home because I believe people need it. Okay, and there is a notice in China that says any foreigner that is coming from abroad should be isolated for 14 days. Any foreigner that is coming from China should be isolated for 14 days. I haven't been outside of China since last year, July. And I travel and arrive in Guangzhou the 4th of April until today. When I came to Guangzhou, I went to Shenzhen, then from Shenzhen, I came back to Guangzhou to take now my plane and go back to my city. But I found out that they isolated me. How did that happen? <clears throat> I booked the train that was supposed to go at eight. So I took an hotel next to Guangzhou Nan, Guangzhou South Station. And then, apparently, one Chinese called the police saying that they are black there. So, around 10 p.m., I just saw police downstairs and they were like, they have to take you and isolate you because, what reason, I don't know. And I cooperated. And I was with my girlfriend. 
So we went downstairs and then we followed them. We reached a hotel. I think the name is uh, James Joyce. James Joyce, one hotel. I don't know. So when we reached the hotel, I told them, they said that they have to isolate me for 14 days. I say, that's not what I wrote on the notice. That's not what the Chinese government is saying. The Chinese government is saying that if it happens that you have been abroad for 14 days, when you come back, they have to isolate you, but I've been within China. And in China, we have an app that detects the actual condition because any shop or anywhere you enter, you have to scan it. And then they take your temperature and they ask you some questions. And then you upload those data you just gave into the system or into the QR code. So what happened was like, I'm green. Green means that you're okay. Yellow means that you're between the range of infection and not infection. And then when it's red, that means you're having the sickness. But I was green, me and my girlfriend. We have been like on lockdown for nothing. Our temperature, I'm 36.4. And I'm not presenting any symptom of the sickness and I haven't been in contact with anyone or I clearly explained that. But as if it wasn't enough, they still say no, they have to isolate us. But my point is like, why are they doing that? Why? Is it because we are black? And our government should raise up they are treating black in the world as if we are garbage. We are tired of it. We are tired of it. You guys should be doing something. And the part that is paining me the most is that here in Guangzhou, people are sleeping outside. Businessmen have been chased from hotels, sleeping outside. I'm lucky that I could speak Chinese. How about those our parents that are coming here just to buy goods and go back home? They have been locked down in China just because they couldn't go home, not because they don't want it. That's fucking bullshit. When this sickness started, you guys were complaining that Americans are not taking care of you. That Americans were treating, calling that corona, Chinese coronavirus. But you guys are now calling it black virus. Black and the virus. You guys are the one that spread it in the world. You guys should be ashamed. You are not helping anything. You are fixing the shit you caused. I'm not scared of Chinese. When blacks are staying quiet, it's not because we are scared of you. It's not because we believe China is a paradise. China is not a paradise. I swear God, Africa will double pass whatever China is. But when you come to Africa, as I'm talking to you right now, Chinese people are chilling. I'm not here to spread hate within China and Africa. It feels so sad to see our brothers being discriminated and people that we appointed to lead us, speak for us, are not saying anything. And today, I'm here to tell young Africans out there, enough is enough. How long are we going to sit on the internet and tell the world how people are discriminating against us without we coming together and do something. If Chinese people are treating our people bad in China, we have millions of Chinese businesses in Africa. We have to retaliate. I feel like that is the only solution because the people in power don't care. It's sad. It's not getting better. situation is getting worse and worse every day ask yourself don't we have embassies in china my brother we have <laughs> what are they doing to resolve their situation all right so have you tried to engage uh, you know the ugandan embassy in china to see if there's any intervention that can come through yes thank you so much uh in the last week of january i was talking to our chairman uh, at the embassy, Ugandan embassy in Beijing, and he told us that 
the government has not put any provision for anyone. Then uh, in February, uh, I tried to, to go to the consulate because now our situation was bad because I'm not alone. We are very many. They told me the same thing, that the, the government doesn't put in provision for anyone. Then I contacted the ambassador himself. It's one week back since I contacted the ambassador. He told me the same thing. Then uh, last Saturday, I contacted him again. The ambassador told me that every Ugandan everywhere needs the government's help. And the government cannot give help to anyone. And the only thing we can do is to contact our families. But I want to give a big shout out to the consulate in Guangzhou for intervening. The 14 days, the first 14 days is acceptable by us. Another 14 days, you didn't communicate to us that you are going to do another 14 days after 14 days. Mm -hmm. They have tested negative and then they have given them the paper. Why are they giving them another 14 days? That is one. Two, all the police, the documents, this passport, belongs to the federal government of Nigeria. In line with the international practice, no any country has the right to see the international passport of another country. Wait! 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 They are not in my hand. They are not in my hand. I just will draw it from there. They see it. I said they see it. And then you know, they are deputy. Oh no, I'll come here. They are deputy general. All the passports of Nigeria, they see it. Asking, he was released yesterday. Why are they seizing Nigerian passport? It's not belong to the China. If you seize Nigerian passport, it's like you are seizing Nigeria as a whole. It's not acceptable. That's another thing. The third one I'm going to tell you, you didn't communicate to us that you are going to go to all the Nigerian houses and then you are going to ask them to come out. I'm going to quarantine them. Did you communicate to us? No. Nobody communicated to us. If you want to do your policy of 14 days, mm -hmm. shut down everybody. Don't discriminate. Mm -hmm. That was impressive. But even after saying all that, he was threatened. You want, all of you want to give me? Good. Nigeria is the only country that is fighting for its people both in China and in Nigeria. How you treat our ambassador is very important. Mm. Very, very important. Mm. And I'm glad you did that. But how you treat our citizens is more important. Uh, I know. Yes, yes. Than even how you treat the ambassador. Yes, yes. So, I mean, I just want to, I, I just want to take you, to, I'm sure, you know, my, my colleagues will have some comments as well. Mm. I, I, you, are, you said you haven't seen any of the videos that are, that are out there. I'm at liberty to show them to you. Everybody has a mm -hmm. phone if you want, if that will convince mm -hmm. you because you've said you haven't had an official complaint. You must communicate to us as accredited consulate to you. Mm -hmm. You must communicate to us. Mm -hmm. Then if you communicate to us, we are going to be able to sit with you and then see the modality how we are going to discuss it with our national. I, I'm not sure how you want to address this. Have you spoken to your Nigerian counterpart? In China? Uh, have you spoken to the Nigerian ambassador in China? No, no, no. You haven't? No, no. Have you spoken to this issue? I'm talking about this issue. Yeah. Have you spoken to any official Chinese of the Chinese government in China? Uh, definitely. We have to, like I promised the foreign minister, we take the very. No, no, but you, but you have not. No, no, we, we have done it. But it, it, you spoke we, to the Chinese government. Oh, we're still waiting for the because we we are here. We don't get the picture, the whole picture. So, but we have to report the concern from Rada Honorable Speaker and the Minister. We take it very seriously. Yeah, my whether you have please by Monday, Monday. Mm -hmm. I'm aware that this is a weekend, mm -hmm. uh, but by Monday. So we have a couple of days on Tuesday, please. Or Tuesday because Monday is a public holiday. Well, today is a public holiday, so we're, we're working over public holiday. All hail Nigeria.